In this part, we're going to see how to upload and download data using HTTP client. When you send messages and receive responses, both of those can have content associated with them. With HTTP client, either directly or indirectly, we're always using these types to send our messages. So request on the way up and response on the way down. And notice that both of them have content included. There are three really common data types that you might want to transfer. Byte array for binary data, stream for something like an image, and string for text, including the serialized form of objects that you might be transferring. To represent those different types of content, there's a little inheritance hierarchy in the standard library. That right there is the base class, HTTP content. And then there are derived classes for all the common data types. Those three right there are considered the most common. They're the easiest to work with, but there's a few others as well. We're going to look at both download and upload, starting with download first. When we get back a response, we can look inside the response and pull out content. When we do that, we're going to get a base class reference, so a reference of type HTTP content. It offers us three read methods to pull out the data from the body of the message in any of those three formats. The procedure we're going to look at first is, is kind of a manual process. This is going to apply when we're using the send async method and the get async method. The basics of creating the request are stuff we've looked at in previous parts. So we create the request and, and send it off using send async. We get back a response. Then we pull out the content property from the response. So that is a base class reference. You don't actually know, nor, nor do you really care, what derive type it's really pointing at. You would have to actually go dig around in the implementation of HTTP client to figure it out. Most likely, it's going to be stream content as the implementation. But then again, that's a, that's a detail that you don't really need to, to worry about. All you do is call read and get the data in whatever format you prefer. That was the verbose way to do it, using send. There are three convenience methods that make this much easier. So these three, get byte array async, get stream async, and get string async. They do almost all the work for you. The fact that there's an HTTP content object and a read as string method, all of that's hidden from you. So the code slims down quite a bit. Create your client, call get string async, you get back the string immediately. Notice you don't see response message anywhere here. You don't see content. You don't see read as string. So everything's done for you. It's very convenient. Finally, we're going to look at upload. There's two cases we're going to do here, the verbose case and the slightly simpler case. First, we're going to do the more verbose case with send. And then we'll look at a little bit more convenient option uh, with the post and put methods. When you use send, you're required to create the request object manually. You also have to create the content object and load it into the request. So you create the request object and then you set that property right there. This is the data that we want to transfer up to our server. First, we have to serialize it. Notice that we're serializing it into a string. Since the data we want to transfer is a string, we're going to create a string content object. The, then the constructor there takes the string as its parameter. So now we have the content formatted and, and ready to be sent along with the message. We have to create the message object, load the properties. There's the new bit, loading the content into the content property of the request, and then use an HTTP client to send it to the server. The code we just saw was for using send async to do the upload. If we use put or post instead, the code simplifies a little bit. We're still required to create the content object. So there's the data that we want to transfer, serialize it to a string first, create a string content object containing the string data. But now here's where things get just a little bit simpler. Create the client and call post. Notice the second parameter to post is the content that we want to transfer. So this is just, it just saves you a couple of lines of code. You don't have to create the request object and, and load the content property and so on. 